It's time for member statements. Thank you. I recognize the member from Leeds, Thousand Islands. Mr. Speaker, uh, today I uh, rise to honour Lois Hunter, a giant in my riding, who passed away in her 100th year on April 27th. To quote Judy Drummond, a friend of Lois's and the president of the Lombardy Agricultural Society, Lois was a lady of grace, respect, and a great friend to many. Her interest in the Lombardy Agricultural Society continued over the years and was a part of her life even into her 100th year. We certainly appreciated her work and advice in the district and provincial level of the Ontario Agricultural Societies. We will miss her guidance and support, but her legacy will live on into the future. Her granddaughter, Shannon Miller, used the word supporter, quote, whether it was for her family, in her business, or personal endeavors, of the many local organizations she belonged to, of her husband as he served his many years in municipal politics, or of any of and all of her friends, neighbors, and members of the farming community in whatever situation they may have been facing at any given time. My predecessor, Bob Runciman, summed it up best about Lois when he told me, quote, Lois, with all her family and community commitments, her energy and enthusiasm, well into her 90s, was a never-ending inspiration to me and many others. And with her unbridled love for and devotion to her family, she was the epitome of a wife, mother, grandmother, and great-grandmother we should all have in our lives. Her passing is an enormous loss, so she did so much, so well, for so many. Rest in peace, my friend. Member statement. I recognize the man from Tumissing-Cochrane. Thank you, Speaker. The agri-food industry is one of the premier industries in this province, uh, $45, $50 billion to the provincial economy, uh, eight, 900,000 people work in it. And this is one of the most important times of the year, because regardless what you grow, regardless where it's processed, this is the time of the year where the seeds go into the ground. The 200 crops the that we grow in Ontario, the vast majority, they go in now. And there are different times across the province. And I just want to give, on behalf of the entire legislature, a shout out to the farmers who are making those decisions right now. Because this is an incredibly stressful time of the year, because sometimes planting conditions aren't right. In many parts of the province, they're not right right now. And that farmer, whether he has 10 acres or 1,000, has to make that decision. He puts that soil in his hand to see if it's dry enough. He's got th he or she have got thousands of dollars on the line. On behalf, on behalf of all of us, farmers take the risks so that we can eat. And that's something that we can never, ever forget. And farmers who make those decisions, they need to have control of their own land, the land that they have built and conditioned so that they can grow the food for us. They should control their land. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Scarborough North. Center. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased to announce Bursman Green, a significant partner in Scarborough, Green, Scarborough Center's innovation, affordable and supportive housing at 1236 Bursman Road in my riding of Scarborough Center. After my visit to Birchman Green, I realized that our government is getting it done with the action call for affordable housing. Birchman Green Inc. and Chamberlain Architect Design, the 15-story residential building with 220 mixed affordable and supportive rental units. This true, thoughtful and inclusive state-of-the-art de design philosophy meet architect and functional needs with 45 fully accessible home outdoor greenery, rooftop garden, library, accessibility, uh, shareable workplace, indoor and outdoor children play area, bicycle storage, uh, dedicated office for support services in the organization. 
social enterprise, and many other amenities. They deserve praise for the collaboration with many partner state seats in the gallery here today, Tim Neb, the president, Birchman Green, and the project developer, Maureen Hulenham, City of Toronto, Michelle Nathan White, Community Living Toronto, Heather McDonald, Love Community Service, Jessica Whalen, Fred Victor, Abby, Abji Dola, and Redwood, Abby, and Rima Goldsmith, Birchman Green Property Managers. Please continue the wonderful work you're doing in Scarborough Centre and across Ontario. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Your statements, the member for Thunder Bay, Superior North. Thank you, Speaker. Today, I would like to uh, honor the Francophone who live work in the region of Thunder Bay Superior North. We have Francophone who live in Northwest Ontario since uh, a long time, and they continue to work very hard in order to make French language teaching uh, available in all the region. And also, uh, since a few years, they have uh, started to work with with other Francophones who come from Africa who live in our region and who are very happy in our community. For example, this fall we have had the very first celebration of African uh, companies, which actually included a big market and a gala dinner. We, in order to support all these activities and to welcome new uh, uh, comers, we have a Francophone center in Thunder Bay. This organization works very hard in order to put together all francophones and to build a community. We, they offer their service and they work with all people who want to learn French and who need actually to retrieve their heritage, their francophone heritage like I'm doing, and they contribute to social activities, to educational and socio-economic activities in French. I really would like to thank all the francophones in town for what, what they do, for the work they do, and for the way they support francophone activities. Thank you very much. Miigwech. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Ajax. Thank you, Speaker. Today I rise to recognize a very new business in the town of Ajax called Mavericks Donuts, located at Randall Drive, just across from Pickering Village who create custom donuts baked fresh every day. I've discovered my favorite flavor is the Oreo Narvera. Who, like <laughs> who could not like that? But this story is an amazing story, Speaker. I highlight them because these are two young people that moved to Canada in 2018 and 2020, Krishna and Mansi who had a dream to start a business and establish a life in Canada, and have done just that. They have struck together through the challenges of being new to the country, navigating on their own, and banding together to create a new business and a new, be it one of the newest residents of Ajax. Mr. Speaker, this is what Ontario is about. This is what Canada is about. We want, uh, provide opportunities for our immigrants to come and create a life that they are proud of where you can have a dream and achieve it, and our government will continue to stand behind new entrepreneurs. Congratulations to Krishna and Mathne and to Mavericks Donuts. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Sudbury. Speaker, uh, there are a lot of milestones in health and safety this year. Uh, April 28th was the 40th anniversary of the uh, Workers' Day of Mourning which I've always been proud of that started in Sudbury. It was also the 50th anniversary this year of the Elliott Lake uranium miners wildcat strike. That, that strike led to the Ham Commission, which led to uh, the backbone of our Occupational Health and Safety Act. So because of those workers, every worker in Ontario has a right to refuse unsafe work, to participate in workplace safety as part of their committee, and to know about hazards in the workplace. And, and that's something that they struck for safety and didn't just apply to miners or just people in Elliott Lake, but everyone in Ontario, which makes me very proud. Last year was the 40th anniversary of Injured Workers' Day. And, um, fascinating story for the Speaker. In 1983, the uh, legislature was doing some work on workers' compensation, the predecessor of WSIB, 
and over 3,000 injured workers showed up at Queen's Park to talk about this. And the committee had to leave the committee room and do the deputations on the front stairs of Queen's Park. So the following year, in 1984, um, they had Injured Workers Day, the very first one, and they've been doing this for 40 years. The thing that's surprising about this is that it's never been formally recognized in the legislature as an official day. And so I'm hoping before the 41st anniversary in April or uh, June 1st, that we will recognize this. I have a bill that's coming for debate uh, on, uh, on the 30th. Uh, it's my bill, but it's all of our bills. We all go to Injured Workers Day ceremonies. We all recognize the importance of, of helping injured workers and ensuring they're, they're taken care of effectively. And so I'm hoping that all of my colleagues would join me so that we can support the bill to officially recognize something that started here on the front steps of Queen's Park uh, over 40 years ago. Thank you, Speaker. Yes. Thank you very much. The member for Eglinton Lawrence. Yesterday, I spoke about Yom Hashoah, the Holocaust Remembrance Day, which fell on May 6 this year. Starting this Sunday, and within only one week, members of the Jewish community in my riding in Ontario and throughout the world will soon observe two more significant holidays connected to Israel, the Jewish homeland. The first of these is Yom Hatzikaron, which is Israel's official day of remembrance, which honors both the sacrifice and courage of Israeli soldiers, over 20,000 of whom have been lost in the defense of Israel, as well as the memories and lives of innocent civilians and victims of terrorism. With uh, the conclusion of Yom Hatzikaron on Monday evening, Jews will celebrate Yom Hatzma'ut, which celebrates the Israeli Declaration of Independence in 1948. This unique week, week takes observers from profound sorrow to profound joy. Our Jewish friends and neighbors go from reckoning with the Holocaust and reflecting on the extreme cost to their families and community caused because they did not have a homeland, to remembering the profound cost to the Jewish people of maintaining their homeland. And finally, they conclude with the celebration of the creation of their homeland. It's a highly emotional and profound journey in the space of one week, a jury, journey that will be particularly poignant this year in the aftermath of the October 7 terrorist ambush on innocent civilians, the ongoing war, and on ongoing plight of some 133 hostages still being held by Hamas terrorists in Gaza. Ontario is proud to be home to one of the largest Jewish communities of any Canadian province, and the observance of these days is particularly significant to them. To the Jewish community in my riding and across Ontario, I want to share my profound sorrow for your loss, my profound support and respect for your struggle, and my sincere congratulations for the great future that you are building. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Scarborough Guildwood. So, Speaker, June 1st isn't just any old day, it's Guildwood Day. The weather's warming up, and it's time to take the streets to celebrate one of the best neighborhoods in Ontario. For five decades, the Guildwood Village Community Association has been throwing the greatest party this side of the Rouge River. And for, for this 50th anniversary, they're even going bigger than ever. We start off bright and early with a pancake breakfast at the Guildwood Presbyterian Church. We will all need a big breakfast because it's going to be a huge day. Next, it's the parade on the parkway. The whole street will be full of that famous Guildwood spirit. If you're marching along, just taking the view, it's a good time for all to be there. Following that, we have the community marketplace, face painting, games, food, prize draws, and more. We will top it all off with the Guild Park Evening Barbecue, woo, with musical performances by local artists, Sonic Square and Tug of War. Guildwood Day is fun for the whole family, so I hope to see all of you there. Um, bring your friends, bring your family, bring your constituency staff, because everyone is welcome on Guild Guildwood Day, and I'm happy to be your host. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Essex. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today, I'd like to take this opportunity to congratulate one of the local heroes in Essex County. It's our friend Kristen Kennedy. She's the CAO of Erie Shores Healthcare, and she helps run the Mobile Health Clinic. It's a special mobile health clinic that helps provide care for people who are typically not visiting their primary care ser uh, service provider. The Mobile Health Clinic provides regular health checkups, but it also can provide some basic dental health care some mental health resources, 
and now even offers vaccinations. It's open during evening hours and also on weekends. Of course, this is all made possible by a special program offered by this government through the Ministry of Health. The Mobile Health Clinic is helping keep people out of the emergency room and helping to provide care where and when they need it. I want to thank the Minister of Health for this important program and also congratulate Kristen Kennedy and her staff and the local health heroes at the Mobile Health Clinic. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Sarnia Lambton. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Speaker. And it's a privilege to rise in the legislature today and officially recognize a very special anniversary. This year, 2024, marks the 150th anniversary of the ancient and accepted Scottish Rite of Freemasonry in Canada. This uh, central, central to the tenets of Scottish Rite Freemasonry is a belief in brotherly love, relief, truth, and charity to all mankind, no matter an individual's race, nationality, sect, age, or condition. Their charitable endeavours fund nine Scottish Rite learning centres for dyslexia across Canada with autism, with four of those located in Ontario itself. And they also fund, under what they call puzzles of the mind, Alzheimer's and autism grants. As we enter the 150th anniversary of the Supreme Council of Canada, may we continue to celebrate their vision and leadership across Canada in its 45 valleys and at the Canadian headquarters just down the road of the Scottish Rite of Canada in Hamilton, Ontario. With more than 10,000 members across Canada, the good works of the Scottish Rite can be seen in every corner of our province and this nation. Mr. Speaker, please join with me in congratulating the membership of the Scottish Rite on this, their 150th anniversary, as they continue to make good men and make them better. And may this great and time-honoured fraternity continue from strength to strength until time and circumstance shall be no more. So will it be. Here, here. Thank you very much.